Um, Edwin Kennedy, um, who the museum is named for, um, is an alum. And he was a collector. He started collecting in the 1950s until he died in the early 90s, like 1994. And uh, so he decided basically to give his collection to his alma mater. So that's why it is kind of interesting to have this collection and this you know, Southwestern Native American collection in the middle of Southeastern Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he really amassed an amazing collection. It represents the whole historical um, trajectory of, of Navajo weaving as well as all the regional styles um, and some contemporary pieces as late as you said 2004. 2004. This is our um, Native American collection. So all the work in this vault, um, we have pretty much over, we have over 690 textiles, Native American textiles, mostly Navajo. Um, and then we also have a large collection of jewelry, would you say like 1,400 pieces? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and that is Navajo, Zuni, and Hopi jewelry. So that's just this space. And it's obviously, as you can see, it's our largest vault that we have. I'd say most, in terms of museum standards, one of the most high tech. Mm -hmm. Um, vault. Well, state of the art vault. State of the art vault. <laughs> and as you can see, the rows and rows, but those are all of our textiles. And then these cabinets here contain the jewelry. And you know, we have these large viewing tables for us to take work out. And again, we have very large size viewing. So. Um, selected the pull from you is by an artist or a woman, a weaver named Susie Black. And uh, she is significant in the history of Navajo weaving because she was one of the first people to start weaving um, certain um, imagery into her textiles. So this room is uh, climate controlled. It has hyperthermographs that maintain a certain level of humidity, a certain mm -hmm. temperature. Um, if you, you notice how they are covered with, um, everything's acid free, with acid free acid rolls, paper. acid free mm -hmm. paper, and they're covered in, in cotton muslin um, so to further protect them. Weavings um, attract three different kinds of insects, so we also have monitors that um, make sure that none of those insects are actually in the in the collection, so those get checked regularly. When a weaving comes in and out of this room, it also has to go through a freezing process before it comes back in. So basically it's a three process where we freeze it, essentially, so that we would be killing any bugs that would be in harvested in the weaving. The ones in the hallway when you walked in, mm -hmm. um, they will be only up for a certain amount of time because they will have the light exposure for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And um, Jeff, who's our registrar and preparator, also uses the mechanism to determine how bright the light can be yeah. on them. So, you know, that's the way they get basically uh, taken care of when they're on exhibit. That's an example. And this one was actually in uh, at the University of Kentucky, so it was actually back there. So the we every artwork is a different process coming back into the collection. I'd say the most extensive is the weaving mm -hmm. because they have to go through that freezing process. And you mm -hmm. notice there's a numbering system. Yeah. So they each have a very particular number. They have a particular spot in this yeah. grid here. So you'll see every you know row and then so we use a database system. So every what we call an accession number that the museum uses. So every number has a um, an eight-digit number associated to it, and then in that record will indicate where it's stored, where like what row it goes in, where it gets put, and it's along with the photo and information. So that's how you would find it. The files here um, contain some of the uh, belts from the collection, and once again we have everything from the older historic pieces like these two to this piece, which incorporated gold and turquoise and lapis lazuli, which would have dated probably to the 1970s. You can tell um, what different kind of work, this kind of work is called inlay work. Um, when the, um, the, lap the stone pieces are specifically cut and placed into basically channels, like this one as well. So here are some of our turquoise pieces. And I think one of the amazing mm -hmm. things about this, the turquoise in this collection in particular, is that um, a lot of these mines are now um, basically extinct. You know, yeah. they're completely... Um, uh -huh. um, depleted. Mm -hmm. uh, so the turquoise represented in this collection is uh, highly valuable, no longer obtainable. We have a lot of cuffs which are really, really gorgeous. These very large turquoise. 